Today I'm going to show you some uh, foam rolling strategies for crimpy knees. All right, so grab your foam roller, any size will do, you can be on a mat. You're going to start behind your foam roller, uh, kneeling, and you're going to walk out onto your hands until your quads come on top, and you're going to start to roll through your quads to start. Now, I like to do two legs at a time for this one, but you could absolutely do one leg where you just shift off and kind of anchor this one out, that would be fine. But I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna use my forearms to kind of push and pull. It's a little bit of core work here all at the same time. Now I want my toes pointing downwards. This is hitting the front part of my quads. Breathing. Good, now I want you to turn your toes outward, like a duck. Whoo, that changes it. Now you're going to start to hit the inner aspect of your quads. There's four muscle heads to your quads. Quad means four. So we're changing up which muscle head we're kind of working here. Breathe. Again, you don't want to be rolling over bone or joint. You want to roll on the fleshy bits of you. Keeping your core tight. Toes are out. Good. You're going to tighten your legs back up and point your toes inward now, like a pigeon toe. And now we're hitting the outer aspect of our quads. Good, breathe through it. Ooh. Amazing, okay, knees down. You're gonna come to seated. So seated on your foam roller. Ooh. From here, I'm gonna take one leg and I'm going to cross it over. So I'm crossing my right, okay, my right leg, crossing it over, and I'm going to now tip to my right hip. And I'm going to really kind of grind in there into my hip glute area. This can be very painful, depending on what type you are, but it's really, really helpful in addressing cranky knees or hips. Good, breathing. Again, you kind of get up on the lower part. You can kind of work into the middle, and then you can even work into that low back area a little bit more, getting deeper. Good, you're gonna release that leg, and now you're gonna fully rotate onto the side of your hip. Okay, that foam roller should sit just below the hip joint, okay? I'm gonna take this free leg, and I'm gonna actually cross it in front. It could be behind, but I find I kind of want my hips tipping forward, we're going to roll your right knee down. So just below the hip, we're going to roll to just above the knee. This one's a game changer for those cranky knees. I can remember. I'm going to try and flex my foot, my straight leg, and using this supporting leg to kind of push and pull along with my hands. There's really no right or wrong place to put your hands and feet, just so that they can support you. Good. So you can kind of turn this. I'm going to kind of turn my toe upward and it hits a little bit more like my back hamstring. If I turn my toe forwards, I can run bus, that hits more IT band. Or if I turn it almost downward, ah, <laughs> that really gets in there. So play around with the placement of your foot. It rotates your leg differently, and it makes it more painful or less painful. Again, we're not necessarily going for pain, but pain is feedback. Pain is telling you that something is tight in there, now, if it's unbearable, just like find a cranky spot and sit on it. You're trying to draw fresh blood flow into the area. I might shorten my roll and work on the top or the bottom part of that IT band, or I might kind of come up closer to the hip and work on the top part of it a little bit more, or I might make that full long roll and work the whole way from basically just below the hip joint to just above the knee joint.
You can kind of come up a little higher and work in through that glute area. Breathe. See us in the sun. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, let's work that IT band. Bringing that to just below the hip, I'm going to turn my hips so I'm now lying sideways on my foam roller. I'm taking that top leg and I'm going to plant it in front to help get my hips forward. Okay, if I open them up, it kind of hits it differently. I'm going to open up more to my hamstring, which if you need to hit, do it. But I'm going to go here because I'm really targeting that IT band. Again, straight leg lifted is flexed, using that hand, those hands and feet to push and pull. Good, again, play around. You point your toe upward and hit the back of the leg a little bit more. You point forwards and hit that IT band. That is the main culprit in crank knees. Oh, point toe down, really get in through there. Wow. Breathe through it, breathe through it. Again, you can work the bottom part. You can work the top part. You can work the whole length. Ah. <laughs> Play around with your foot placement. Amazing. <sighs> okay, another big one for those cranky knees. Okay, you're gonna lie flat on the floor with your hips down. From here, you're gonna bring your knee up to about 90 degrees and put that foam roller just inside the knee joint. From here, this one's kind of feels weird. It takes a bit of practice. You're basically just gonna roll your hips into it. You're rolling your inner thigh. Okay, I'm gonna put as much weight into this as I can. And I'm rolling to just above the knee joint to just inside the hip joint. Okay, tight inner thighs can cause a lot of knee problems and shoulder problems, believe it or not. Everything is related. Your whole body is connected. When muscles get tight and cranky, they cause things to be pulled on or not lengthening the way they should. Things get cranky. Good. Breathe. Again, find a really cranky spot. Sometimes you can just like sit on it. Breathe. Trying, it's like pressure point therapy. You're trying to get it to release. You're trying to draw fresh blood flow to the area to promote healing and recovery. You're also helping promote that release, that fresh blood flow to come and help remove lactic acid. So uh, lactic acid is the culprit of that burning sensation of soreness after a workout. Usually it's day one or day two more often. Good. Okay, let's try the other leg. <laughs> We're gonna come leg hips down, lift that outside leg to about 90 degrees, and then again, you're gonna rock your hips into it. This one does take a bit of getting used to. We can be sore. <laughs> Good. Again, sometimes I kind of work in that short range of motion. You can see I'm kind of flexing my foot, lengthening out my leg, really working in just that, just above the knee. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of lengthen it back out again, bending the knee, working into that full range of motion through the muscle. Working tight towards the pelvis area. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. I have seen foam rolling fix so many problems and it's cheap. Uh, it's something you can do at home and it just takes consistency to be effective at it, uh, for it to be effective. It takes consistency, just like anything else. Good. Awesome. All right, last thing, come on up. We're gonna work those hamstrings a little bit. Okay, so you're gonna have to lift, push. Option one is to two-leg it. It takes a lot more strength to be able to kind of do this pull through action. If that's not great for you, all right, I want you to basically plant one foot. I'll do this way first, okay? And then now this leg is down, that bent knee, and it can support you a bit more so that your whole body weight isn't having to be held up, okay? Now, when you start to roll the hamstring, let's do one leg this time. Point your toe up, point your toe out, point your toe in. Right? Hamstring, it has three muscle heads to it. So by rotating that leg, you start to hit it differently. Hey. Good. And then you're going to turn and you're going to do the other leg. Again, 
again, planking that top foot flex. You're gonna lift, rotating open and close. Good. And you're gonna turn that toe and turn the other way. Amazing. Stand up, see how those knees feel. Again, to be most effective, do this consistently. Do it often. I often keep my foam rollers by the TV, so at night if I'm watching a show, I can be foam rolling while I'm there. Hope that was helpful. Comment below what you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.